Okay. Yeah. We've got you. Okay. I'd like to now. call this meeting to order. Woo! Would the secretary <laughs> please call the roll? Mrs. Becker. Mr. Crangelo. Here. Mrs. Chu. Mr. Sismar. Ms. Guas. Here. Mr. Hong. Mrs. Reese. Here. Mr. Winston. Here. President Lax. Here. We have a quorum. Please rise to salute the flag. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The New Jersey Open Public Meeting Law was enacted to ensure the rights of the public to have advance notice of and to attend the meetings of public bodies at which any business affecting their interests is discussed and acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of this act, the East Brunswick Board of Education has caused notice of this meeting to be published by having the date, time, and place thereof posted at the Board of Education offices. Written notice was also provided to the Sentinel, the Newark Star-Ledger, the Home News and Tribune, and the Municipal Clerk of East Brunswick. All Board of Education meetings, with the exception of executive session discussions, are videotaped for later broadcast. It is the policy of the Board of Education that videotaped meetings are not edited for any purpose. Individuals who speak at the Board's public meeting should be aware of these videotaping rules. Good evening to our steadfast fans that come for the early session. <laughs> um, and I feel guilty every time when I have to do this to you, but... Um, whereas the Board of Education must discuss matters which are not appropriate for discussion in a public meeting, and these subjects are within the exceptions to the Open Public Meetings Act and are permitted to be discussed in closed session, the Board of Education intends to discuss matters as follows, those items listed on tonight's agenda. The length of closed session is estimated to be one hour, after which the public meeting of the Board shall reconvene and action will be taken. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the East Brunswick Board of Education will recess into closed session for only the aforesaid subjects, and that the East Brunswick Board of Education hereby declares that its discussion of the aforesaid subjects will be made public at a time when the public's interest in disclosure is greater than any privacy or governmental interest being protected from disclosure in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act. So moved. Moved by Mr. Winston, second by Mr. Carangelo. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Ayes have it. Thank you so much, and we will see you and I'm sure your friends that will join you in the next hour. Okay, we're all here. Welcome back. And I see, as usual, you brought more friends. So this is always more exciting to have, a, <laughs> to have some smiling faces in the audience. Um, and you picked a good night because Dr. Valeski, I believe, has an incredibly exciting superintendents report. They're not, they're all wonderful, but I'm particularly excited for tonight. There's a lot of good stuff in there. Thank you, President Lax. So that, that's, that's my kickoff? Yes, that's our kickoff. So there is lots of feel good stuff in this superintendents report. So go ahead and recline your seats and, re and kick out that footrest. Um, all right, so you can't do that. Good evening, everyone. The artwork on display in the boardroom this evening was created by students from East Brunswick High School. The art teachers of these talented students are Megan Buckley, Donna D'Amico, Jessica Martell, Matilda Mato, Matthew McCarthy, McCarthy, and Dr. Michael Vanella is the principal. Today, Chittick Elementary School celebrated Murray A. Chittick Day, former superintendent, to acknowledge the bestowment of Mr. Chittick's original writing desk. Students and staff and alumni participated in a presentation documenting his achievements for the East Brunswick School District. In honor of the special day, the school curated an interactive museum with objects reflecting the school's history. And to commemorate this event, an inscription above the desk will say, dedicated to Murray A. Chittick students, past, present, and future. In your life's journey, may you never lose sight of your goals and may you find success and happiness in everything that you set out to do. <clears throat> Along with Mrs. Lax, Mrs. Reese, as a board member and as a parent, and Mr. Hong, I attended the high school's chapter of the National Honor Society induction ceremony last evening. 91 students were invited to join the organization after demonstrating their commitment to the NHS pillars of scholarship, leadership, service, and character. The students are excellent representatives for the high school in the East Brunswick community as a whole. I had the opportunity to work with Rachel Moran's Developing Student Leaders class at the high school on Tuesday, March 28th. <clears throat> students are building their foundational leadership skills through case studies, guest, guest leaders, 
and project-based learning. The discussion on knowing your team and leadership preparedness led to an insightful and reflective question and answer for the class. High school students in the IPL 1 honors class presented their 2023 urban development projects to Mayor Cohen and other elected officials along with real estate development industry experts this past Tuesday, March 28th, right here in this boardroom. Students were assigned specific roles within their teams to consider the many needs of the community in preparing their final urban plan projects, including financial impacts, community interest groups, affordable housing obligations, and environmental impacts. We are proud as each of these incredibly talented student groups impressed the City Council with their innovative proposals. East Brunswick Public Schools is appreciative of our partnership with our industry leader volunteers in the Urban Plan Initiative, along with the efforts of the IPL 1 Honors Teacher, Jonathan Pulowski. I also want to acknowledge Mark Mondre, whose efforts and advocacy led to the creation of this initiative. Sources of Strength Peer Leaders at Churchill hosted a Spring Fling Mixer. This was an inclusive student event. This was the second time peer leaders met with their buddies and there were smiles all around. Students engaged in two activities, Save Fred and Leaning Tower of Pizza. <laughs> that encouraged communication and collaboration with a little bit of a competitive edge. Activities were accessible to all, regardless of ability and everyone enjoyed working to, together to accomplish each task. And before they left, the students were eager to know when their next get together would be. Sources of Strength is looking forward to hosting their last meetup in June before sending students off for summer break. And that's hard to believe that's right around the corner. Counselor Steve Biskowski and the Churchill Junior High School counseling team hosted a career fair for ninth grade students on Tuesday, March 21st. 30 professionals from various careers attended the fair style event and shared experiences working in their chosen field. They also shared why they pursued their choice and the education that was required for their success. Many of the professionals who attended are parents of students in our district. The careers represented range from engineering, fire and police, dentist, pharmacist, waste management, real estate, utility, and more. The students did an exceptional job of engaging with the professionals and asked excellent questions. We are thankful to our Churchill PTA for providing the professionals with breakfast and coffee as a thank you for volunteering their time to support our students' career exploration. It was a wonderful day to connect our students with the East Brunswick community. A lot has been happening in the secondary English department this month. The Poetry for a Posterity Festival at Churchill Junior High School brought eight poets from the tri-state area into the ninth grade English classrooms to show students the power of language and allow them to explore their own power through writing poetry. Students wrote and shared poems about topics ranging from their ancestors to the meaning of their own names. Teachers continued working with students after the event to publish their pieces for a chap book that will be sold at the Kindness Gala in May to benefit the Butterfly Effect Project a special thank you to the generous East Brunswick Education Foundation for funding this interactive experience. The East Brunswick High School hosted a live production of Macbeth performed by the Shakespeare Theatre Company of New Jersey, which I had the opportunity <clears throat> to attend. Thanks to the generosity of the East Brunswick Education Foundation, all 11th grade students were able to attend and enjoy the show, seeing a curricular text come to life on stage. And I must say, I saw an entire 11th grade class absolutely engaged in the performance. It was really something to say. At the conclusion of the performance, the actors and actresses engaged in a question and answer period with the students. The high school English department is grateful to have been able to provide this opportunity to celebrate both academics and the arts with the class of 2024. In the arts department, the newly formed high school indoor winter color guard has been having a fantastic season. After entering the circuit through the Mid-Atlantic Indoor Network in the novice category, the high school color guard placed first in their competition on March 1st. I'm sorry, on March 4th. They placed first on March 4th. 
Their first place win immediately qualified them to be moved into the much more competitive category of regional AA. With the unknowns of competing in a new class, the high school color guard performed beautifully at Monroe Township High School and placed fourth out of nine groups in regional AA. This is an absolutely incredible um, for their first show appearance in a new class. And we have a video clip to share from the competition. So I had the opportunity to watch this a number of times, and you probably didn't notice it, but in the bottom right-hand corner, there is a young lady, probably about seven or eight years old, and she's absolutely chair dancing with the students as they're performing on the floor. The East Brunswick High School Orchestra performed at Carnegie Hall under the direction of Dr. Arvind Gopal on Saturday, March 18th. The concert was a huge success with a large audience in attendance. The opportunity for these students to perform on the stage of one of the most prestigious concert halls in the world was a once in a lifetime experience. Can, can I be rude for a moment and interrupt you before Abs you go on? Absolutely. <laughs> um, because this is obviously a very huge event um, for us, our kids in our district. And we happen to have someone here that got to experience this. I'm not sure if anyone else did. But I do know we have a parent up here that was at the performance. So I don't know, Jeff, if you want to um, tell us what it was like since we're only getting to see pictures. It was absolutely, when I say unbelievable, I, I, that doesn't even capture it. To see our students from here up on stage, that stage, Carnegie Hall, and you know, in the audience. Well, my wife's crying, of course, but uh, so it's okay. And we, you know, it was, and it was very emotional. There were many, many parents were very emotional. But to think who was performed on that stage, it, I mean, the list. If you ever look at the list, it's just awesome. And there are our kids. And you know, I asked my son. He plays viola. I finally convinced him that yes, you are a musician. He, he won't give himself that that identity. Yes, you are. And I said, how, how, what was the treatment? He said, we're like celebrities. They, they got him off the bus. They brought him in the stage door. They go up through the secret passage. It's an old building. They end up in these two rooms for changing, guys and girls. And they were treated like royalty the entire day. And then given the freedom to go out to eat. So, of course, he went to one of the finest New York restaurants, Chipotle. And, and uh, it was just, you know, it's really true because it sounded Italian, he told me. It's like, all right. So, uh, but no, it was, uh, it was the, the performance was flawless. It was moving. It was amazing. And the smiles on the kids' faces were just blown away. It, it, nobody will forget it, especially those kids. They, they're going to bring that forever and ever through their lives. They performed, they, and they got there exactly the way you're supposed to get to Carnegie Hall. They practiced. And they did a great job. So that's my pretty cool pa proud parent yeah. moment. Oh, you should yeah. be. Beyond. They were all our kids, but you actually had one of them that you got to bring home with you yeah. that night. So yeah, yeah. very cool. Congratulations on yeah, that. Sorry. No, I just, absolutely. I just, I'm looking at the pictures and I'm thinking, you know. Oh. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, and even I got sent uh, a clip of the rehearsal, which we we by contract can't play, but they were phenomenal in, in rehearsal. Yeah, you weren't allowed to videotape, so yeah. that one was illegal. And yeah. they, were, they were all over you. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. It was great. On Tuesday, March 28th, the district held our annual Night of Jazz. This event was co-sponsored by EBEF and the Mario A. DeCarolis Memorial Music Fund. The evening was a wonderful night of music with a performance by the Hammerschold Upper Elementary School, Churchill Junior High School, and the High School Jazz Ensembles the high school jazz choir, and the professional group, Full Count Big Band. 
Every April is World Autism Month. Light It Up Blue as Autism Speaks kicks off its beginning with World Autism Awareness Day on April 2nd. Throughout the month of April, a variety of awareness activities will be held in the district. Congratulations to our two GMC Sportsmanship Award winners. Our own, Megan Sang, who is unable to be here tonight because she's involved in a college activity, and that's for swimming, and Omar Rackley for football. So congratulations to both of them. Excellent. On Friday, March 17th, the district hosted a district-wide denim day to help the displaced, displaced families in our district. A total of $2,366 was collected, and I would like to thank our staff for the their continued generosity. They, they do it all the time. That's amazing. And remember yeah. that we need to do something where the board can actually participate in a denim day. I think we have a very generous board, and I think that we would be happy to do that next time you have a denim day. If you could. I thought you wanted to do pajama night. I do want pajama night. I do. Admittedly, I will pay double for pajamas. But right. um, I'll start with the, the denim jeans. Very good. Third quarter report cards will be available on Tuesday, April 18th. Hard copies will be made available at the request of anyone without internet access. On Wednesday, April 19th, at their 29th Annual Partner and Excellence Dinner, the East Brunswick Education Foundation trustees will honor our own Dr. Joyce Bowling, Susan Miserak, Katie Monteseski, and Douglas Schwartz. Each year, this recognition is bestowed upon individuals and organizations that epitomize the foundation's mission to enrich and enhance the educational experience for students attending East Brunswick Public Schools. In addition, the EBEF will be inducting Ann Milgram, who currently serves as administrator of the Drug Enforcement Administration, into their Alumni Hall of Fame, which celebrates the accomplishments of East Brunswick High School alumni in the fields of academics, athletics, and the arts. And for more information regarding this event, please visit ebnet.org slash ebef pi pie. Just a reminder in case you didn't already know, schools will be closed for spring recess Monday, April 3rd through Monday, April 10th. School will resume on April 11th. I hope everyone enjoys their spring recess. And President Lax, I have one more thing. I would like to do. Go Could ahead. you join me in I front for a plaque? I would be very happy to. Yes, I would be very happy to. This way. These chairs are really comfy. But it's very You know who you are. Come on up here for a second. <laughs> this is incredibly, incredibly bittersweet for this board. Um, I know you're all absolutely as devastated as I am. This lovely woman, how many years have you been here? 27 and a half. 27 and a half. You know, she and I are only 29 years old, so it's amazing that you've been here 27 and a half of those. Um, the board for years of dedicated service to East Brunswick Public Schools. Now is the time of life to remember the many things achieved and special friendships made, which I consider you. Um, congratulations on your retirement. <laughs> Bittersweet, happy for her, devastated for us. Thank you so um, much. So on behalf of the board, we want to give you this. <laughs> so great. And thank you. Also like oh, to give you thank this. you so much. And if I could just, um, for a moment, if I could actually bar, I'm going to borrow your seat. You know what we should do? Yeah, uh -oh. I'm going to borrow your seat. Are you going to come sit among we us? Should, oh, oh. We should change it. Yes. <laughs> so if you, could just, if you could come walk around and join me for a moment. Um, oh, thank you. Okay. <laughs> yes. We're going we're gonna to boot him for a few minutes. <laughs> so you come. Oh, <laughs> Danielle Rogerier, our superintendent oh for the evening. Got promoted. Yeah. Yeah. You're welcome for waiting for after the very lengthy superintendent support he didn't have to give it. Um, but I think it would be nice for you to sit here and excuse us. We're going to um, indulge ourselves for a few minutes. Um, 
I'm so I scared. Think, <laughs> no, 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 So, well, I know for myself, and I'm going to, my, my board members, you've meant so much to this yeah. district. Um, some you. of us have served with you on this board a lot longer than others, but even for the newest among us, I think that everybody up here has seen the kind of person you are, that your caring and your compassion in your job makes you so stellar and irreplaceable, but your heart and the things that you do that probably a lot of people out here do not know what you do in your extracurricular time, um, and the organizations that you help, and I'm sure that you're gonna have a lot more time for your philanthropy now that you're retired from us, but I wish that I were a better spoken person and I was able to put in words how much you've meant to me, to this district, to the staff that, you know, you are the head of HR, but honestly, woman, you care. These people don't report to you. These people are protected by you, loved by you. I just think what you've done is, is unbelievable. And as I said, and I have no doubt um, in Mrs. Tibbetts' ability, and I'm very excited for the future of this district, but 27 years in this district, starting in the classroom, ending where you did, I just think that we just had to spend a few extra minutes with you. And thank you so if, much. Uh, you know, if the board members would also like to say a few words, I would love Jed, you want to start, Jeff? You want to go around and everyone can say a, as few or as many words as you'd like to, to Danny, to okay. our superintendent for the evening. And everybody's going to have something amazing to say. I've, I've worked with you for four and a half years. Um, I can't remember the name of my five children, <laughs> and you remember the names of everybody in this district. Mm -hmm. And that yeah. is a testament to the dedication. Uh, you know them personally, you know their spouses, you know their children, you know their likes, their dislikes, who had a fender bender last week at Walmart. <laughs> I mean, you know everything. Thank you. And that is, and then not to mention uh, your activity during COVID. Uh, I mean, my God, you're like, like a field general. I mean, you ran yeah, that thing you. like, uh, yeah, like you've done it a hundred times thank before, you. and it hasn't happened in a hundred years. So. I appreciate everything you've done. Thank for you so much. Thank you. Thank you for everything you've done. You're the most kind, caring person. Everyone who meets you loves you. And you've made such a difference here in the district. And in, in the time that I've known you, I feel lucky to have known you. And you've made a big difference in so many lives. And we're going to miss you. I'm going to miss you, too. Thank you so much. And you, you, bring, you bring your heart to this job. It's not just a job. We know that. Um, but what most impressed me is similar to what Jeff was saying, that I ran, you know, my, I brought my daughter to an event, met you, and you were like, oh, you're from Central School. And, like, you remembered her name. It was just amazing. I can't remember my kids' names, and you remember them. So <laughs> it's just amazing that, that you know, the, the kids mean so much to you that 25 years later you're remembering them. It's amazing. Yeah. Thank you Thank so you. much. So when I first started here, up here, I, um, I called Danny to tell her about something that I had heard had happened in a building in the middle of the night with a night custodian and the fire department that was positive. And I said, you know, so many compliments from the fire department about this night custodian. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And instead of, and I was worried that I was wasting her time because she's very busy. And instead of making me feel like I was wasting your time, you told me all about this night custodian. At everything, a success story with such warmth and compassion. And I feel that way every single time you speak about someone here. Um, schools are interesting because they're sort of living things and you are definitely part of the heart here. And it is very, very appropriate that you are what brings people in to make them East Brunswick green. And you're why people stay, I'm sure, because you, you just advocate with so much love. We are going to miss you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Gentlemen. So I agree every statement my fellow board members made. Daniel, you're so special. <laughs> you make this school district special. Everything you did you with your heart, you did it with your heart. Everything you did will be remembered. We, we are going to miss you badly. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, Danny, thank you so much for everything you've done here. You've made everyone uh, very proud, and uh, I appreciate everything you've done. Thank you so much. And you know, we can add one other thing to your, your list of long accomplishments is babysitter. Too. <laughs> and, so, and I'm sorry, so Vicki, <coughs> so you have to love Danny. 
I, re I can't remember what my children did, but there was something, there was a time where, out of punishment, I brought them to a board of ed meeting. I'm a lovely mother. And this is so many years ago, and I couldn't remember what happened, but for whatever reason, they had to be here, and I said, you're gonna sit through the board meeting. My son, this woman, <laughs> It took something that my children were supposed to be learning, and I shouldn't say being punished. She took my son shopping around all of the desks that had candy. And to this day, and I'll never forget, we went to Disney World not long after that, and he, he went shopping. He brought her a mug back. He, he had to bring a souvenir for Danny. And to this day, you know, this is what, 10 years ago? I'm trying to think how long ago at this least, was. Yeah. yeah, at least 10 years. So he remembers her and loves that about her, and that it's true, your heart. And I'm sorry that Vicki isn't here because Vicki is the only person on this board that's worked with you longer than I have, so I'm sure that she's devastated not to get to be here Thank to talk you. about that. But, you know, you, you've heard from, from the board members, you know, you just, you mean so much to us, Thank you so to the much. staff, everything about this. To my son, to my son who will miss you terribly. Thank you. Oh, that guy down there. I, you know, you don't have which, to clap Which right guy? <laughs> but so, Danny, I'm sitting here. I'm, I'm just, I'm reflecting on this moment and realizing this is your last night out for a board meeting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. And, um, but you know, so many times an organization changes. Sometimes you know people change. Organization changes. But seldom do you have a person who leaves you is going to leave a lasting legacy. Mm -hmm. And that's what Danny's going to do. Your, your presence among the staff, not, just, not the physical presence, but just the connection you have, as everybody said, to everyone here. And that legacy is phenomenal. You Thank are you. a caring person. As, I, as I've told many people, you're, you're like that person in the bar, cheers. Um, you know, that knows everybody's name. But you know their story, like, like everybody said, you know their backstory, you know their families, and, and that's what makes you you, and you're special. Thank you, it's been such a privilege. And since I'm the superintendent, <laughs> I'm gonna take this opportunity to say a few words. Matt, is that legal? It is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Totally legal. <laughs> So this is the perfect opportunity to thank the board for the privilege of working in this district for 27 years. This is my second home and this is my family. I student taught at Chittick Elementary School in the fall of 1995 after serving as a substitute for two years. And I had the most incredible cooperating teacher named Rita Brown. Rita's generous mentoring paved the way for me to become a successful teacher in East Brunswick which was a tremendous privilege. For the past 17 years, I have had a greater privilege of serving as the Director of Human Resources to 1,800 of the most talented and caring people. Every person in this district contributes to the excellence within. Dr. Valeski, I am grateful to have worked alongside you. And you know that when I gave you my retirement note, I said it wouldn't be hard if I didn't love you so much. And uh, Dana, my partner, you, working with you and Mike Wildermuth has been a privilege. And together, we have been able to help so many people. And I thank you for that. You are a class act and a wonderful person. The central office team, the people at this table, and the supervisors, principals, administrators, managers, we have done so much together. I would not have survived a single day as the director of HR without the HR department. Catherine Mahmoud, who is our support staff winner this year, you are my right hand, my mother, <laughs> my soulmate, my sergeant. You have kept me in line. You are amazing. Sherry Adler, Mary Grace Rogers, Lorena Neese, Catherine Orifice, um, Jill Dewis, who left us, uh, but dedicated so many years to the department, and my assistant director, Dr. Sharice Anderson, who I always say, my Sharice, um, who, with the help of Jean Mosley, will keep the department in the right direction, and Nicole Tibbetts, who will take the department forward so that we can continue together to, well, not me, but everyone else, <laughs> to provide um, our kids with a high-quality education, 
Um, this district is so blessed to have the best employees, many of whom reside in East Brunswick. And each of us, we together play a critical role in the social, emotional, and academic growth of the most wonderful students in New Jersey. I am so blessed um, to be part of the East Brunswick community. I often felt like I lived in East Brunswick and this town is just a wonderful place. I, I leave with so much gratitude and I have to tell you, I have not had this much fun <laughs> in a long time. So thank you for my superintendency. <laughs> but, but really thank you to all of you because it, I, I wish the public knew how hard you work behind the scenes so that our kids can have the best. Um, and I am just, uh, to, to work in this district has just been such a joy and I leave with an incredibly grateful heart. So thank you all so much. Thank you. So everybody have a seat, <laughs> and we're going to continue. Oh, good. Okay. I believe we have some reports, don't we, President Locks? <laughs> Superintendent Virginia, I like this. I may not let you leave. No age, no, because we're closer in age than that old guy. So you know. <laughs> Interesting. You're sitting in Vicky's seat. <laughs> oh my no, gosh. no. no. You're, you're gonna, you're I'm gonna tell her too. I am gonna tell her tonight. Yeah. Okay, so this this is actually this is the bittersweet one. Um, this next one is actually um, an exciting one. So I I see my friend back there. I'm gonna go over to the podium to do this. Is that okay? It sure is. Okay, Mr. Levitt, can you come join me? I'll read to you, my friend. So of course it's, it's, it's fitting that we do this after you saw all the wonderful things that the Education Foundation does for us. So yes, so it's very good. And we mentioned, of course, the, um, Danny, come on. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> come on up here, <laughs> Superintendent. <laughs> so we're going sorry. to do a resolution down of the job appreciation <laughs> yes, for the East Brunswick Education <laughs> Foundation. Whereas, since its inception in 1993, the East Brunswick Education Foundation has funded 1,653 grants, totaling over $2.8 million in funding for technology, equipment, cultural programs, author's visits, school-wide -wide, cross-curricular learning events, hands-on materials, many books, and much more to complement teaching and learning throughout the district. And whereas from July 2022 to March 2023, mm -hmm. the foundation has awarded 33 grants amounting to $96,000 towards its ongoing mission to enhance and enrich the curriculum for the students attending the East Brunswick Public Schools. And whereas at its annual Partners in Excellence Dinner on April 19th, 2023, the foundation will celebrate this year's honorees, our own Dr. Joyce Boley, Susan Miserak, Katie Modiseski, and Douglas Shorp, as well as the induction of Ann Milgram into the Alumni Hall of Fame. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the East Brunswick Board of Education expresses its appreciation to the foundation and its supporters for the generous and continuing commitment toward excellence in education, and be it further resolved that the East Brunswick Board of Education recognizes and applauds the 2023 Partners in Excellence Honorees and Alumni Hall of Fame inductee on having been selected by the foundation this year. May I please have a motion? So, Mrs. Gwas, uh, I'm sorry, you know what, I'm going to actually do it backwards. Mr. Hong, with a second by Mrs. Gwas. Um, and then we're going to have some discussion. And as you can see, if anyone that doesn't know, which I think everyone probably does know Jack Levitt because he is the face, the heart, the backbone of the Education Foundation, um, who's with us here this evening, uh, it's very hard, uh, kind, of, kind of like our superintendent here, the list is so long in terms of the things that you provide for this district to say thank you for. Um, a few of them were highlighted here this evening, um, but it's really, it's truly your wonderful, wonderful partner to have. and. Um, I'm going to, to see if Mr. Hong, would you like to say a few words, Mr. Hong? Oh, yes. As our liaison to the Education Foundation? So, uh, during tonight's uh, superintendent report, I counted Dr. Velasky states five times EBEF funds the program, uh, provides grant for those programs. 
<coughs> that shows the, what a great job Jack and his team did and is doing for this school district. For one night superintendent's report, making five times, five grants to, the, to our school program. So you guys provide the pilot program, open the doors, not just to our students, to our teachers, because for the limited resource, so many programs, we don't have the re resource to provide our teachers to test it, to make sure if it's fit for our students. But you provided so many times, $2.8 million. It's not the number, not the 2.8 million dollars is opportunities to our students starting 1993. So many programs because you provide, you initiate, you put the seat, so we start have good programs. I believe all East Bronx graduates after 1993, 93, will remember you, will remember that big apple, will remember EBEF. Thank you very much. And I have the privilege to work with you for how many years? I know how hard you are working. You are taking every single opportunity to raise every single piece. Not for you, it's for our students, for our children in this town. I spoke with so many school districts because I'm serving the board of directors for NJSBA. There's no such education foundation in this state. People are amazed, asking me how you guys did, how, why, how can you guys raise so much money? I said, if you want to know, you better call Mr. Jack Levin. And you go to our board meeting, you will know how hard he, he's working, how hard he worked before. And he's tried his best for our student, not for himself. He sacrificed his own life, his time so much, but for the best interest of this town and our children. Once again, really appreciate and keep doing a good job. So well Thank said. Yeah. Is there any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Congratulations. Let's take a picture. And let's take, take a, a picture. picture. Yes, with the, with the superintendent. And the As a deputy <laughs> superintendent, I'd like to shake your hand. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. and I, I told you. I told you. I get to hug you. You're the yeah. superintendent. Come on. Come on. You can be the assistant. Oh, no. Be the assistant. You can be the assistant for the night. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Danny's really hamming it up. <laughs> she should, right? It's my only chance. That's right. <laughs> go for it. <laughs> She's going to go into a stunt of lawyer's system. Yeah, we can still get tickets for the... Still get tickets, yes. Please get tickets. It's a wonderful event. Yeah. April 19th. Your doctor goes to school. It'll be up on stage. Good job, yes. Yes. This is fun. It's really fun. Oh, it's good for you. <laughs> oh, thank <Thanks>. you. <laughs> <laughs> See, I was just swept away in the moment. Okay. Don't you love when we do this to you? We have you do the presentation after something like that? Always. I know, Always. but you know what? All right. But we do have a presentation that will be almost as exciting as the rest of the evening. Um, Mr. Crotchfeld oh. and Mr. <laughs> Mr. Cleland are going to, um, to give us a, uh, auditor, an audit presentation. So, so before I start... You know, I looked at the agenda, and I was like, oh, there's no student presentation that I usually have to follow, where the students do, like, amazing things. But then, this happens. Let's move it along, Mr. Crotchfeld. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good oh, night. I'm not letting her go. <laughs> so... Before I start, Danny, you will be greatly missed. And I will and miss I you, my friend. I appreciate everything that we've gone through the last 21 years that I've been here. Thank you so uh, much. So I have your cell phone number. Yes. When crisis hits, <laughs> I expect you to pick up the phone. All right. So, board, thank you uh, for allowing me to present the 2022 Comprehensive Annual Financial Report. Um, Last year for the 2021 audit, as uh, previously discussed at board meetings, we received the uh, excellence of financial reporting for the Association of School Business Officials uh, International and the Government uh, Finance Officers Association. We will be applying for that again for the 2022 year. 
governmental funds to highlight uh, expenditures. By far, the general fund had the most expenses uh, during the 2022 year, uh, over $201 million. Special revenue fund, uh, $9.1 million. Capital projects, $68,000. And then debt service of $6.4 million. So the general fund captures the day-to-day -day operations of the district. Payroll, supplies, materials, uh, utilities, uh, and so forth. So at the end of the year, we had fund balance of $29 million, almost $30 million. The important thing to note is that all of these reserves are legally restricted in some way. Um, $7 million for capital improvements, $7.4 million. Uh, for encumbrances, those are open purchase orders uh, that carry over $9 million, uh, the required uh, state of New Jersey 4% that we're required to have, a um, million dollars that's applied um, for tax relief, um, another million for tax relief uh, designated for subsequent years that offsets the, the budget, and then uh, $547,000 for unemployment compensation. Special Revenue Fund, and feel free if you have any questions um, or if you just want to make a comment so you don't fall asleep to ask. Um, special Revenue Fund, that's the fund where our grants come in. Um, I like to refer to it as money that has strings attached. Um, we just can't do what we want with it. It's for uh, specific purposes. Um, our major awards for last year, uh, IDEA, $2 million. It was a slight decrease from the previous year. Uh, NCLB, those are our title funds, uh, $1.1 million. It was an increase of $200,000. Um, EBEF, as mentioned, how, you know, what a great job they do, $192,000 of awards. PTA and other, uh, $2 million. And then the Adult Basic Education Grant, $290,000. We had expenditures in that fund, like previously, previously stated, of $9 million. EBF, $110,000 worth of expenditures. PTA and other, um, almost $2.1 million. Federal, of four point eight, million, almost $4.9 million. Uh, that covers the IDA and the titles, uh, the NCLB titles. State of New Jersey, $531,000. Uh, that's the adult education grant plus all the uh, non-public money that flows through the district, and then $1.4 million in other. Capital projects, uh, this is the account that uh, is used to manage the resources restricted or committed to capital improvements. Um, that would be if we issue bonds and do an addition, build a new high school potentially in the future. Uh, those funds would be accounted for in this, the capital projects fund. We had total expenditures of $68,000, uh, and that related to the ESA program um, that the district has uh, participated in the last couple of years. Debt service. This is um, where we pay our bonds. It's like your mortgage for your house. As of June 30th, 2022, we had bonds payable of 60.6 million. Uh, 2020, uh, 2012 refunding bonds um, of 43.5. That's the Hammershold, Lawrence Brook, and Central School uh, renovations that we did. 2020 refunding bonds of 9.7 million. Uh, that's Memorial. And then the ESIP uh, bonds of 7.3. The important thing to note there is that 7.3 million and the, the payments are associated with the general fund because we issued bonds, we have to pay those down, but we're, uh, as a result of the investment into the schools, reducing the utility charges, it's an offset, so it's accounted for in the general fund. Continuing with the debt service, um, legal requirements, we have a debt limit of 4% of the average annualized value. The current debt limit is $326 million. We have net debt of 69 million, which represents about 21% of the debt limit and a, a debt margin of 256 million. Um, we're 
we could go out and borrow additional up to that point. Um, as each year passes on and we pay down our current bonds, that number increases. Enterprise funds, child nutrition, we had operating revenue of $500,000 and change, non-operating revenue of 4.9 million. It's important to note due to COVID, the last several years, uh, meals were free to our students and that was, um, we received the majority of the revenue through the federal or state um, program. Uh, they, they picked up the tab for those meals. We had operating expenses of 3.9 million, resulting in a net position change of 1.4, almost $1.5 million. Meal served, 1.2, almost 1.3 million meals served last year, which is just remarkable. I, I think any restaurant in town would be more than happy to serve 1.3 million meals. That's an increase of uh, just over 200,000 meals from the prior year. Another enterprise fund, community programs, total revenues of 2.7 million. It's comprised of the early morning, after school uh, kids, early learning academy, and other. Other is the enrichment programs, uh, some of the adult programs that we run. Um, total expenditures of 2.3 million. So we had a income or a net profit of 443 million. We did not transfer anything to the general fund last year as we recover from COVID. Um, I think as previously discussed, um, COVID had a significant impact on community programs. Um, in 2019, we had a very healthy retained earnings and it definitely took a hit. Um, at the end of 2021, it was down to just over $100,000. So this is good, but we're not where we need to be as we make the recovery. It's been a slow process to get kids uh, back to the early morning program and the after school program as we've seen um, parents still working from home, so the need is, is not there. Facilities rental, uh, total revenue of $486,000. The important thing to note about this, we didn't start renting our facilities again until about February of last year. So, you know, it, I think it's remarkable that we rent it that much and the man was there. Um, back in December of last year, we had no staff, all right, because we weren't renting out. Uh, we had myself, Chetna, and, and John McManaman, um, and we started from scratch, and they did a tremendous job hiring and, and getting us back going. Um, we had total expenditures of 240,000 and uh, a net profit of 240. So um, I do believe facilities rentals is, is back. Uh, we are booked, dance competitions, you know, everything. JM Pack is definitely in high demand. So uh, that's a great sign. All right, some other financial facts. We had total cash inflows of $315 million, outflows of $308 million, ending cash on hand, $53 million. Other financial facts that the important thing about all these financial facts, every single one comes with a requirement, a regulation, a law, a board policy, um, and we have to make sure we're in compliance. So when, you know, you see up there, issue 4,000 tax forms, they all have to be in compliance with the IRS or you know, what have you. Same thing when we register students in athletics, um, you know, a thousand before and after school program registrations, uh, school enrichment issued over almost, you know, almost 7,000 purchase orders, processed 18,000 invoices, um, by the way, with two people. We have a manager of accounts payable and one bookkeeper. And, you know, that, that's a tremendous feat. Um, issued, you know, over 40,000 checks between accounts payable and, and payroll. Processed thousands of timesheets and attendance slips and the bid renewals and bid process. Um, you know, 
just it's never ending. Um, you know, it's kind of crazy that the audit is so late due to the, the state's issues, um, but the cycle never ends, and in, you know, it's just constant. In the compliance and the requirements are, are relentless. So, this is one of my favorite slides, a because it's the second to last one, um, and it just shows how well the district operates together. You know, it, it takes everybody, the instructional staff, the administrators, child nutrition, community programs, facilities rental, facilities management and transportation, student activity and athletic funds, special education, student services and curriculum, um, human resources, information technology, financial services, of course, the superintendent and the board of education. We work together, we fit as a puzzle. It's not always perfect, but we come together, and as a result, we have a successful audit. So we turn everything over to the auditor, um, and then he gets to comb through everything and see if we did a good job or not. So now Scott will uh, present his portion Thank you, Mr. Crashford. Actually, if I'm going to give you, if you can give me one second, Scott, I'm going to, sure, so. Mr. Juliana wants to. So, um, Mr. Crotchfeld referred to the never ending process, um, and that's what it is because we are responsible for managing the millions of dollars that are entrusted to the Board of Education by the taxpayers in this community. I think it's important to note that when it comes to finances, it is this area is the only area that is subject to annual scrutiny. It is the only area of operations that is subject to an independent auditor to come in every year and review what we've done to ensure that we are in compliance with law and Board of Education policies and regulations. So I want to thank Joe, Tara, and the entire finance team for all of their work because they helped keep us on the right track, and I appreciate that. And to Scott for always being there as a resource because one of the things that we learned many, many years ago is that you don't hide from your auditor, you work with your auditor, and you seek the counsel of your auditor whenever you have a question. So thank you very much. So Scott, please. Thank you, Bernie, and good evening, everyone. I'm Madam President, Vice um, Board members, as well as the new superintendent. It's nice to be here tonight <laughs> to uh, present the results of the 2022 fiscal year audit. Um, as you may recall, this is usually due December 5th, and. I know it's really late when you pull up and it's the, there's sunlight out, where normally it's dark when I'm giving these presentations. So um, unfortunately, I don't see in the short term that it's going to be much earlier than it is right now. Um, in fact, every year it seems to get a little bit later with the information coming out of the state. In fact, this year they didn't provide us the information until sometime in mid-February. And then all of a sudden we're trying to get audits out. And then March 6th, another change comes out. That, Oops, the numbers we gave you were not correct. So. That's why we're at the point where we are. Um, I do want to, again, recognize Bernie and Dr. Valeski, Tara, Joe, and the entire finance team because they do put in a lot of time and effort. And they're, they're on me all the time, which is great. They keep me honest. I keep them honest. We work very well together trying to make sure we and keep in compliance with the state laws and so forth. And Bernie's right. He, they call me when there's questions, and uh, we provide guidance when we have some information to provide. Um, the deadline this year was, is, was moved to March 31st. So your order has been filed with the state in accordance with that deadline. And again, the uh, information was not provided until mid-February, and it is filed on time. Um, I've already recognized them, but they are the best finance group that we work with in all the school districts that we audit. Now, last year when I worked for Wisson Company, I could say we did 14. Now I can compare you to 45 um, because the new firm I joined does 45 of the 580-some-plus uh, school districts in the state, 
And I can still, proud to say that I still can say the same thing about the team that's in place here and the dedication and uh, focus on controls and compliance to make sure that nothing goes astray. And again, if there's ever an issue where there's a question, they know they can call me and they do. Um, Joe handled the tough part tonight. Again, I gotta give Joe credit because quite frankly, this is the only board meeting that I do where my feeling is the district does what they should be doing as part of an audit. They should be providing you the numbers. I should be talking about the opinion. This is the only district in the state that I know of, and definitely the one that I deal with, where you have someone capable of getting up here and giving a great presentation on how you run your district and what the numbers look like. So again, kudos to Joe for uh, putting that together and being responsible for that part of the, the uh, uh, presentation. Uh, Joe always mentions too, it's, it's not just the business office we look at. The audit is all encompassing. We look at various different areas. We look at your application for state school aid, your um, transportation uh, accounting. We look at your instruction, student services, debt service, capital improvement. So it's not just working with Tara and Joe. We're dealing with payroll and other departments that provide us with a lot of information that you know, I don't want to let it go unnoticed either. So when we come in here to do the audit, we have an objective. We have to provide an opinion on your financial statements. And that is based upon the information that's provided to us. Does it meet the standards? And are the numbers that we're looking at, that we're presenting in this audit report, um, materially stated and would not lead a reader to believe something otherwise than what's in there? So I'm happy to report that this year's audit is, again, an unmodified opinion, which is a clean opinion, highest level opinion that, that can be provided. Um, if you do look at the opinion in this year compared to last year, you're going to say it looks different. It does. The opinion is now in the first two paragraphs as opposed to buried on, buried on page two. Um, that was a new change from the AICPA, which said that people only care about the opinion. Why don't we put it first? Uh, we also perform testing of controls and compliance testing in accordance with government standards in the federal area as well as the many, many, many state requirements that we have to follow uh, for state guidelines. And as Bernie mentioned, there are a lot of them, and every year there's more. They don't take away, they add. Um, we also have to look at your major federal programs. So obviously with a lot of CARES and ARP and ESSER money floating around, they would be the ones that we would spend some time looking at. And we did. We looked at your IDA program and some of the other programs that received some of that money and I'm happy to report that there were no internal control or compliance findings in terms of how those funds were spent by the district. The uh, report that's in front of you, the ACFR, the Annual Comprehensive Financial Report, has four sections, introductory section. What's nice in there is it, it's the transmittal letter which gives the district an opportunity to talk about things that they've done from a non-financial perspective. The financial section, one nice thing in there is the MD&A, Management Discussion Analysis, which is about a 10 or 12 page section that really lays out a comparison of where you were at this year versus the prior two years, as well as provides several pages of all the different accomplishments that East Brunswick Public Schools implemented or received during the 22 fiscal year and looking forward. There's also a statistical section which is 20 different schedules looking at taxes and taxes across the township as a whole, debt service, debt outstanding, student enrollment, and so forth. And then a single audit section would be where the federal grants are housed and what we have to do to test those. Audit results, again, great audit, good financial position, unmodified opinion, very, very strong pos position. You do a great job putting the um, reserves aside for future use. So, you know, we never know when another COVID's coming or you're going to need some money for do, for do some things. So great that you have those funds set aside all within the legal requirements. Also from a uh, control perspective, there were no material weaknesses or significant deficiencies. In fact, there were no findings that the board will have to take corrective action on uh, as part of this year's audit. And that pretty much summar summarizes my part of the presentation. I'd be more than happy to open up to any questions that you may have. 
Thank you, Scott. You know, you would think that we would get tired of hearing unmodified, um, great job, Joe, Tara, Bernie, you know. It doesn't get old. Mm -hmm. It really doesn't get old. Um, Much better than the alternative. Yeah. I, the, <laughs> I told you we had a special night, so aren't you glad you all came out for this? We had, right, Superintendent Ruggiero? This is a very exciting night. It really um, is. And we, we can't say enough about this department. Um, Bernie, Joe, Tara, it's um, unbelievable. Um, any questions for Mr. Quallen? Yes. Go ahead. Yeah, not a question, just some, uh, maybe it is. Is it this the second year in a row with no recommendations? Um, I think at least. It's definitely second. two years in a row. Um, yeah. It may, it, it's definitely two years. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I would say that's, that's a really. I think it's three. Maybe three. That's yeah. a really impressive outcome. So I, I just want to echo the thanks to everybody to get that done. There is an incredible amount of detail involved in, in running a district and you know, the amount of information you pour through and to come up with no recommendations is really amazing. Year after year, yes. And they helped wrap this job up during budget season as well, which makes this time of year very, very difficult for all of us. That's true. That's true. Mr. Winston, did you have? Yeah, a um, couple of questions and then a comment. The, in going through the audit, uh, I know we had some residual dollars, and I don't know if you would address this in the audit, some residual dollars left over from the uh, federal and state granting uh, our aid for COVID purposes and, and keeping the lane narrow in terms of usage. Um, was that looked at during this audit or was that the prior year and, and nothing stood out to you as far as misappropriation or misuse of any funds? We looked at it last year and I think this year, let me just check we look, we'll make sure. <clears throat> Yeah, this year we looked at all of your, we looked at the um, Educational Stabilization Fund, which was the most significant part of it, which was ESSER II, Learning Acceleration, Mental Health. We looked at your Title I program, we looked at your Child Nutrition program, which included emergency operational costs. And we also looked at the additional or comp compensatory special related services grant, which was the over 21 kids and how they were serviced. So those four grants were significant enough that we looked at them this year and we did not have any issues with them. None at all. So None you found all. that our usage of that, of that money, which was quite frankly somewhat unexpected, was used for its purpose and one can easily surmise to enhance uh, the district uh, in using those funds properly? Yes. The, the items that we picked to look at, whether they be payroll related or regular vendor expenditures, there was definitely strict guidelines as to how you could use those funds, and we made you know we have to look make sure that all the expenditures that we looked at were in compliance. And we did not have any issues with any of them. Thank you for that. Then, then I say to the finance department, uh, Mr. Crotchfeld, and all, I mean, exceptional job. I was looking at the numbers when you said just meals served. That's the equivalent of serving every member of San Diego uh, a meal tonight. Uh, and um, I, I've been to San Diego. It's a pretty, <laughs> it's a pretty big town. It's very congested. Uh, and, uh, and the last thing I'll say is our former superintendent, Dr. Valeski, once said, <laughs> uh, I want to point I, that out. I just want to clarify, Mr. Winston, I'm not the former superintendent because of any financial issues. That's right. <laughs> well, so. that just eliminated my last question, oh, so sorry. thank you for clearing right. that up. But, I, but I, I, you know, I will say, in using, in using the words I've heard recently, is that yes, we educate, but we're in the service delivery business, and, our, and the product that we turned out are educated students who are ready to face the world. Um, I can see that the money being well spent, and even in situations, with special situations such as state and federal aid, uh, I couldn't be more proud of that department, this district, and appreciative of the scrutiny that you give this. Um, I am comfortable that we as a board are, and administrators are doing exactly what we should be doing to deliver a quality product. And I think your, your opinion and representation of that definitely backs that up, so I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other board members? Mr. Hong? Thank you, Dr. Pulaski, Bernie, and Jill, and Scott for the good job, and a lot of numbers. So I do have a question. On the third page of Jill's uh, handout, so uh, the fund balance of June 30, 2022 is about $30 million. Can I understand it as the surplus for the school district? Oh, it's the other one. And 
So it's, a, it's a required to reserve. So Third. is our school district handling this fund? For so them, my question is: for so this large amount of money, if you put is financial institute A, they give you no, zero interest. If you put another interest, it may give you one percent. If you get third, another one maybe give two percent. So can we invest this thirty million dollars to generate good income every year? We are restricted okay, yeah. by a regulation in the state. Uh, the acronym is GUPTA. And that restricts the types of investments that governmental entities, school districts, can enter into. Um, it's interesting that you bring that up because this happens to be a fresh conversation that we've been having internally, uh, myself with the finance department, in terms of how can we improve if there's room for improvement, how can we improve upon our investment earnings? And we've been engaging in that conversation. It's not a conversation to be had in public at this moment. It's something that we've been talking uh, about bringing to the Finance Committee, and we'll be having a Finance Committee meeting with some recommendations coming. Thank you. So because it's a very significant amount of assets here, so if we do something wisely, safely, we may have get some extra benefit. That is my, my point. I'm not questioning anything you guys are doing. Not I guess it's my right. Uh -huh. I think with Goodpa, they're they're all about safety and, and not allowing you to get into some high risk items so right. that you're using funds and all of a sudden you take a, a large loss. You know those funds available to you. They don't want that to really be happening to to governmental entities in New Jersey. So that's the justification as to why we're very limited in New Jersey with what we can invest in. But there are some other mechanisms that I know Bernie's looking into. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I see no other questions. President Lax, if I Joe, could. Yes. I, I just wanted to say before we wrap this part up that you know, I, I can't go without saying thank you to Mr. Giuliana, Joe, Tara, the entire finance department for what you do because Danny, as you'll find out as superintendent, <laughs> that you, you will not sleep at night if you do not have good financial controls. The first person to go is the superintendent. And um, a superintendent's longevity is tied to strong financial department, compliance, policies, and just having great people. So thank you. And actually, along those lines, Joe, Tara, I would love for you and your department who's here today, could you stand up, please? And, 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 and Bernie as well. No, I'm not going to stand Yes, up. yes, I think you should. <laughs> Joe, would you like to give a, before you sit, would you like to give a quick shout out to whoever, who's here tonight? So we can recognize them by name? By name. All right. No, no, um, I think it's important. Yeah, so. so Tara Rosenving, we have Chetna Mahapatra, Jody Liberty, Allison Paleto, um, Kathy Rowe. I almost forgot her last name. That's what I'm <laughs> uh, Yeah, I do want to recognize Mike uh, Capobianco. He works for Aramark, but he is a, a big, important member of the child nutrition team, Jane Bresniak and um, Lori Taggarty. So, um, you know, I'm glad you called me back up because I yes. kind of felt bad they should be recognized. Absolutely. Uh, I, I think, you know, it's great. I don't like the attention, but I do appreciate the kind words, and I know Tara does too, but, you know, we're, we're pieces. You know, it, we can't do it without everybody here and the other people that um, decided to take a vacation day instead of coming to the presentation. <laughs> but, you know, I'll handle that tomorrow when they return to work. Um, but, you know, it's the support of the board, the support of uh, Bernie, Victor. Uh, I'm not going to say thank you to Danny again. She won't be here, so. Oh, <laughs> I'm, only I'm only kidding. I'm kidding. So, you know, so, um, you know, it's just been. It's not too late. <laughs> Excuse me, um, Scott. <laughs> May I suggest, congratulations, Joe that next year you um, audit the results of the annual Valesky bulb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Will do. 
Thank you. One last thing from me, too, is when I walked in the room tonight, she was sitting in the back, and she's, she knows everything, or she knows everybody. Oh, yeah. She goes, oh, we had a good audit this year again, didn't we? So she even knew, how, knew the results of the audit before I even presented. <laughs> you thought we were kidding. We don't over-exaggerate here. Says we'll have fun. Thank, Thank you very, very Thank much you. for that. Thank you, Scott. Have a good night, everyone. And I'm glad, Joe, that you got to acknowledge your people because you, you are the face and we all get to see you, but it's nice because we realize these are the people that, that uh, make us all look good. So thank you to all of you. Okay, this has been so much fun. I forgot where I was in my, position, my place. So um, for the good of the cause for the public, the Board of Education recognizes the value of public comment on educational issues and the importance of allowing members of the public to express themselves on school matters of community interest. To protect the privacy of all students and staff, concerns regarding individual students and staff members should generally be addressed by first meeting with the appropriate administrative staff. In order to permit the fair and orderly expression of such comment, the Board should provide a period for public comment at every meeting of the Board. Public participant is limited to three minutes duration. Elapsed time will be determined through the use of a timing device offered um, by the board secretary. And I always do remind the public, this is your time to speak to the board. It is not a dialogue. Um, we do listen. We do not respond. But anything that needs to have a follow-up, we will be leaving information, um, contact information with the lovely ladies in the front. So that being said, is there anyone this evening that would like to speak to the board? See? They've been shut down by the quiet. They're all still in awe from the last, um, the audit report. Okay, well then, seeing none, I'm going to close the public portion of this evening's meeting, moving on to our Board of Agenda items. Um, is there anything that needs separating out this evening? No? Then I am going to ask for a motion for this evening's agenda in total. So moved. Moved by Mr. Second. Winston, second by Mr. Carangelo. And I'm going to entertain discussion on any area on tonight's agenda. Any discussion? No. Okay. Then will the secretary please call the roll. Mr. Carangelo. Yes. Mrs. Chu. Uh, yes, except Board of Education item four. That's an abstention on? Abstain on item four, yes. Thank Noted. You. Ms. Gloss. Yes. Mr. Hong. Yes. Mrs. Reese. Yes. Mr. Winston. Yes. President Lax. Yes. Motion carries. Bring us to new and old business community reports. Information items and for the good of the cause for the board. And I just actually wanted to, um, you had such a lengthy and wonderful um, superintendent's report this evening. So I just wanted to actually mention a couple of things. I wanted to make some comments. I should be looking at you, not at him. I still apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Look at like, like Dick trained. Um, so the first thing was, and we got to hear from Jeff about the Carnegie Hall, which was wonderful. And the reason I did not go to Carnegie Hall is I actually went to the show. And the reason I wanted to bring that up was because this week I was also at the ULI um, IPL training that you mentioned. And one of the things that really stuck out to me in both of these situations was not only how impressive these kids were, but how important the staff is to bringing out those talents. Um, and two things I will say is I had the, and, and it was there with me, the last night of the show, the kids brought out flowers. And you're always so used to seeing the stars of the show, right? Everyone loves the stars of the show. You bring the flowers. It's a wonderful thing. I will tell you, it was very lengthy. But what really impressed me was the fact that these kids recognized all the behind the scenes people. And they talked about the things that they did from the tech to the set building, the people that you would never see to know that went into the show, the wonderful students that were so talented that are on the stage we all get to see and applaud. These people, just like we talk about today, you know, with your department, they went out of their way and they had real speeches, I mean, from the heart about what these people, what every kid meant to it, um, including their director. And one of the things that I loved was a young lady that gave the flower to Jeff Davis said that he was the reason that she wanted to go into education. And, you know, I always talk about that with Mr. Calamano and, and when I was an Ipple student and his, um, his impact on us. And so seeing how Mr. Pulowski is with these kids and seeing what he has drawn out when Mark Mondry um, and my husband, for those of you who don't know, this is, I would say it's my husband's other baby. You know, he's, he's a member of ULI. When he brought this to us five years ago, um, and he and, and, and Mark Mondry worked so hard to get this program, it was terrific. And 
couple years ago, Mr. Pulaski, Jonathan Pulaski, took it over, and it's unbelievable to see the lens that these kids have taken such ownership um, of this project. And again, knowing how much that he's meant. And a lot of the kids will talk about how he's challenged them. So as I said, you know, as board members, we get to go to a lot of things. Um, you know, Jeff, you got to be a board member and a parent at some pretty impressive things this week, right? And we all get yep. to do it. You know, we have kids that play sports. And I know for some of the board members whose kids have since gone and some of the young ones that will be coming through, you'll get to experience this. But I just think it's, it's such a beautiful thing when you can kind of look and see not just you know what the students say about the staff but but really how they interact with them and so i just i just wanted to say that the uli thing again was just beautiful and it was a great collaboration we talk about collaboration with the township um i know that um councilwoman winston was there and councilwoman um Zimbiki was mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. and um obviously the mayor helps and, and runs this and they, they do it as if it's the um the town council with the members of the uli and i know our economic development uh, person Rob uh, Zuckerman was there. It was just, it was a really beautiful collaboration of seeing how we work together with the township, but really the stars of the show were these kids and Mr. Pulaski with this program behind the scenes. Just, you know, I always say, you know, we have the talent of these kids, but it's our incredible staff that is able to nurture and to bring out this talent and, and make these kids what they are that, you know, week after week you give us reports of all of the things that they do, mm -hmm. whether it be, you know, in an educational, in the arts, in athletics, and, and you know, in this case, I mean, these kids are our future, and they're planning cities and doing redevelopment, and Mayor Cohen should really, you know, maybe hire some of them because, you know, it would be great for the town, so. Sorry, sorry no, about my that, Actually, if I could, one of the dynamics of this year was there was a, it's lack of space at the township, and the request was, could we have it right here at the board room? And actually, it was packed, it was dynamic. It was great. I wish we would do it all the time in here. Yeah. You know, it was, uh, you know, my office is right next door. And you got to hear literally everything that was going on, even if you didn't want to hear. The cheering, you know, all the, the just the competition of it. And as you mentioned, uh, our elected officials that are here, Dr. Zabicki, Jeff, your wife, Dana, uh, Mayor Cohen, and, and especially Mike. Mike, Mike Lax was here and... I've seen him in past years give feedback to students and be critical of students, and they really grow from that relationship and, and being able to think on their feet and answer really tough questions. So uh, we appreciate the community support, the support from our elected officials, and our students just love it. They, they react to it and they love it. They had set up out here with a, um, a table and were constructing 3D Lego models. And it was a pretty active space here all day long, so it was pretty cool. I would definitely encourage any board members every year when we have this, if you can be even for part of it. So I set up in the back and I, I had my laptop and I was able to work remote and, and, and be able to experience some of this for a bit. But I have to tell you, when you said that he's critical, one of the things that amazes me with these kids, and, and part of what they do up here is they act as if they're really a town council. They really do ask hard-hitting questions. Mm -hmm. And for all of us as elected officials, you've been there, and we give reports, and maybe our budget managers could probably attest to this. It's very difficult to not only you research and you present, but to be there and to have questions come out that come out at you that you don't know what they're going to be. And I have to tell you, these kids, the grace under pressure, because they don't, they don't, there's no, like, you know, easy punches. They are absolutely going at them full speed. And these kids, they hold their own. They are so bright. And it really is just a lesson in, I can't wait to see what they do. But you're absolutely right. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful, and we are the only um, school in the state. <laughs> that does this program. So it's a challenge maybe to another school district um, if they want to do it and they can kind of maybe compete with us and have a, you know, we, we have the eight groups that we're competing, but maybe we can compete against another school at some point. Mm -hmm. but, but it is, it's really, it's such an impressive program. So I, I can't say enough about it and uh, how impressed you should be for the parents of those kids. And I believe that, yeah, you're, you're a double winner tonight, right? We have the Carnegie Hall, and then did you, the Simon. same kid. I, I told him he oh, didn't he, win, so, and I said, you should have played the viola. Okay. And, 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 <laughs> okay. So, 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 no, he put a park. Uh, what, did he, what did their team do? They put a park next to a shelter yeah. at the, on the corner of a, of a major road. So I could see where that could be uh, a one problem. Of them, I mean, it was the alley. Well, an alley. I said, you know, you got to find a little. But no, I like the idea that he, you know, he gave it.
gave it a good. You know, and, and that's very interesting. And I didn't realize it was the same kid since you have twenty kids. Yeah, twenty. But yeah, but 20, he but you know yeah, what? 20. So you that's that's another proof positive, right? Does he and he does he do try? Is he does he do track or does he do a sport too? No. Okay. No, no, All just, right. So, we, but double threat. But here's yeah. the thing. So here's something where you have a child that is excelling in an area, right, in our arts, and then he's excelling in something academically. That let's face it, there are kids that are great students. But Ipple, and and I say this as a very proud Ipple alumni, is is an experience unlike any other. And you could be an incredibly bright kid and you can be a 4.0 plus student, but Ipple is, is something that really, it's real life experience, not even just the ULI portion of it, but you know, you're, you're, legis you're doing research, you're proposing legislation, you're debating, so the sure. fact that he's, two, two, two different things that he's excelling in. That's, it's endless. It yeah. tells you what these the kids are, uh, yeah. He's just shedding his love. But you know, and on, if I could just expand on what, something you said, I don't know if you looked at the agenda tonight, yeah, but again, going back to what we deliver in terms of product goes far beyond the walls and, and borders of East Brunswick. I'm looking at we're sending kids three days to model Congress in New Brunswick. Ipples all something. over the place out here. The robotics group is going. Where are they going? Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Terrific casino there. So be careful. They're, they're going. You know, so so they're doing these things mm -hmm. away from East Brunswick again, delivering at such a high standard. I talk to my friends in other districts like. Well, Going to New Brunswick for what? You know, nobody nobody does what we do here, and I, I don't say that because I'm on this board. I say that because I've lived here forever, and uh, this Ipple, oh my God, you know what? What won't they do? And um, and uh, actually, I, I expect they'll replace Danny one day in in, in her role. So that's they're that good. So, <laughs> get a lot of mileage from yeah. the superintendent. Yeah, yeah. it's working I was out pretty wish well. Them for they, they've so anyway. been the people for you know thirty something years running. So. Yes. So. Um, anything else? Yes. Okay, ladies. Um, so I've had the opportunity to, I think, move in over at the high school in the past two weeks. Uh, uh, we were at the show, mm -hmm. which was extraordinary. We didn't get to see the end part. We didn't have a babysitter that late. We should have gone to the, the matinee previously. <laughs> Available in the future. Oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. We're hiring her over at my house. That's great. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I've also been at the high school for spring sports have started. I know Megan's not here, but it is glorious over there to see all the kids out and the field. The bear looks nice. Um, but the thing that really struck me was I had, I had a very sad moment, or I guess a really happy moment, but I walked out of the high school after my oldest's last parent-teacher conference and walked out. It was beautiful, beautiful sunset. I was like, okay. But I was thinking about the comments that were made by the staff, which I don't actually want to talk about my own kids, and I hope they never see this. Um, but I don't want to talk about my kids. I want to talk about the staff, because I keep talking to teachers who very rarely discuss grades with me. I, I, you know, I can see their grades. They're there. Um, they didn't want to talk about grades. They wanted to talk about character. And I so appreciate that in a town so large, and my student, or my children, as uh, students, I think are kind of self-effacing. I don't think they're, I mean, one of them stands out a little by height, but I don't think that they're like rushed to the front of the crowd kind of kids. And the amount that the staff and the teachers know them, you know, security tells me they know who they are, they're always looking out. The, but the staff to talk about character over and over again, and then to watch them come off the field and everything they have to say about their coaches, very little about the sport itself, more about not wanting to disappoint, what do they expect, what should we do that's the right thing? I just, I've had this overwhelming impression all week that what we are giving here is far more than just curriculum. Mm -hmm. And just wanted to comment on it. It's been an impressive week for that. It's very, very, uh, very important. You're very, very. Oh, Mrs. Reese? Yes. Yeah. Uh, just a few quick things, uh, thank yous. I kind of a little bit all over the place as I was reading the audit and reading all the paperwork they were get, we were given. Um, I noticed a few things. Uh, first of all, I want to reiterate what Lee was said about EBF and Jack and his team. Uh, they just do uh, so much for our district and bring a lot of programs to us that really are cutting edge that we may not have been able to have a whole lot. So uh, thank you again. And the PTA bringing in over $2 million, I mean, that's a lot of hard work, and we really appreciate that. It's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a lot of... Uh, different events and planning and so forth. And um, again, to the Bear Den, I saw a lot of, uh, 
some wonderful information about how Dr. Zimbicki and her team were bringing in students to have the, you know, the proper dresses and outfits that they need for you know, spy the prom and special events, so thank you very much. And uh, facilities, if you look at, the, you know, everybody is, you know, it's not as exciting reading as, uh, as uh, but the, there's a lot of lists of some wonderful facilities improvements you know we have aging buildings and I want to thank our district uh, for everything that they do in that respect and there's a list a while long of, of uh, the improvements that we you know uh, we have for Mr. Giuliani, Mr. Shank and uh, all the whole team uh, is, you know facilities that they do to maintain Dr. Valesky of course to maintain the buildings so I just wanted to mention that because we get all this information and it's a lot to process uh, you know, through all this. And I also just want to say thank you to the folks at the high school for the NHS ceremony that Dr. Valeski mentioned. It was a beautiful ceremony. Uh, it was um, Sherry Kofinas and Brian Rickleman are the advisors. They do a really wonderful job. It was a beautiful ceremony. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, my last student that would be in the NHS. And, and, uh, it was just the, you know, the character, leadership, scholarship, and service. So it's just a beautiful organization. And just, again, reiterating what you said about staff. The staff puts a lot of time and effort into these events to make it special for the kids. And I wanted to say my appreciation for all these things. So thank you. All good stuff. And actually, um, in a bittersweet note, this was the first um, NHS induction without having um, Leslie Anderson there, who was such an important part of um, NHS. And board members, you should have gotten an invitation to the Black Tie Fundraising Gala benefiting the Leslie Anderson Memorial Scholarship should be in your, um, your mailboxes, because she really was NHS. And uh, Just one quick uh, committee report. I did attend my first ad hoc uh, development of the high school project. Um, I think the dialogue that's happening in there is great. I, I, I know that uh, Dr. Valeski and his group is open and willing to hear ideas, uh, even from those who don't necessarily attend these ad hocs. Uh, this is a project that it's in development, what direction we ultimately go in. Uh, I know and I'm confident saying that it's going to be for the best interest of this district, whether it be renovation, build, or other options that are out there. But I, I will say that the conversation is spirited. And, um, and that's good. And, and I think we as a board are doing uh, the responsible thing in packaging what's, what's going to be you know, a, a, a huge uh, and uh, monumental undertaking that's going to leave its mark on this township between 70 and 100 years, I would anticipate by what ultimately is chosen. So, uh, so that meeting was valuable. Um, the conversations are great. And I remind the public that ideas should be brought to this administration. I, I, it's, this is not a closed meeting in its traditional sense. Uh, it's, it's, this is one of those things that actually takes a village. It is not, and thank you for stealing my committee report. But, so I will- You talked first, which, so I thought you were actually done. No, it's fine. Make her I stop. appreciate uh, it. No, 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 no. I just was going to to add to that. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, so you you said it. You said it very well. So the only thing I'm going to add is that the committee will be having its last meeting to finalize and report to the board. So thank you for giving the committee report. That was a good tag team effort on behalf of well, Vicky. Not, here. Not at all. That was wonderful. So, yes. Yeah. So uh, last Friday, uh, I had the board of directors meeting in Trenton. So. Uh, Everyone knows that uh, three days ago, the Nashville school shooting. So the school safety is a combined effort of teachers, administrators, parents, students, and the community member without children in school. So the NJSB Firearm Safety Task Force issued this report. So it recommend, it provides 28 recommendations to Board of Education how to handle uh, the uh, firearms in school. This is not just, uh, it is my opinion, it's not just for Board of Education, it's for the community. Everyone who cares about school safety, please go to NJSBA, NJSBA website, take a look. So let's work together to keep our schools safe, keep our children safe, keep our teachers safe. 
So this is for the important thing. We talk, we spend a lot of time to finally finalize this report. And the second thing is uh, for people in, uh, in the uh, negotiation team, NJSBA formed a negotiation data portal. So it's put every contract's information settlement in the website. You put your inquiry there, it will generally report, provide you the information you need. So the people on, uh, for the negotiation team, please go and play with it. You will get a lot of information. And sir, I, I believe no, almost everyone don't like the start strong test. So uh, board of directors lobbied very hard uh, with DOE. So very quickly, this test will not be administered for our children. So the teachers can have more time to teach our children. Children have more time to study without worrying about the studying start strong test. So. And there are many other things we are working on, and uh, we're, we're hopefully, you know, we are trying our best to help schools. That's all we do. Thank you, Dr. Valeski. President Lax, I just wanted to say, Mr. Hung, thank you for the the comment about the school mm -hmm. safety. The report from NJSBA. The I want to let you know too that there there was a companion uh, kind of survey report from NJASA, the Administrator Association. Uh, and I'm, I'm really, really pleased and proud to be part of a school district that's so progressive with security. Uh, this Board of Education, this community, um, everything that you've invested in over nearly a decade or more uh, to, to make our schools and facilities as safe as they possibly can be uh, is just something that is, um, you don't see replicated in other school districts. And, and so I'm so appreciative of our school security officers, our relationship with the township, our school resource officer, um, the support of the board, board of Education, ongoing training, ongoing practicing, continuing to look at our practice every single day and improve what we need to improve and respond to every single situation. We do not take any event that happens on a national scale lightly. It is a debrief for us. We look at it in its entirety, and we look at how we can improve our own practice locally. And in fact, we just had an administrative meeting uh, that emphasized security this earlier this week. Uh, so we take these opportunities very seriously, and we try to make sure that, that anything we can do to improve it, um, we take great care in doing that immediately. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but I just want to assure the community, this is ongoing. This is. Um, Continuous improvement. We, we are good, but it's just continuous improvement every single day. Now, we've always been ahead of the curve, but we, we, you're right. We never rest on that. There's always, right. no, that's very important. So, yes. Um, is there anything else this evening? No. Okay, then I am actually going to end it by uh, letting our new superintendent for the evening. Thank you. Wrap things up for Thank us. you, President Lax. <laughs> I have um, just had so much fun tonight. I want to thank Dr. Roleski for this opportunity to be your evening superintendent and the board. And I want to serious on a serious note, thank you very much for your kind words and for again a, an amazing 27 years of employment. And I would also like to remind our school community that spring recess is next week, and we wish you. Uh, the opportunity to disconnect and then to enjoy your families and for our students to take a well-deserved break and um, and just use the time to um, indulge yourself in fun and in relaxation. Can we, can Thank we you do so a motion much. to make just like the Murray A. Chittick desk? Can we use that chair right now and put your <laughs> name? I know, you know, I just realized something. If, if I don't adjourn this meeting, Bernie may kill me, but if I don't adjourn this meeting, Danny can't leave. <laughs> we could have we could have a sit in. I know. Well, yeah. Yeah. Like a really? Violin I know. Okay. Well, you know. All right. I know. I know. In all seriousness, this, 
I hope you had fun in your in your new chair. I, it was um, wonderful. You got to spend a night. But you know, honestly, it it's funny because you. Not spent, many people have the opportunity to no, say. No, they don't. You know, and you spent many years were, talking and saying nice things about everyone else. So this was kind of oh, fun to you. do it for her. So it was it was really right. just beautiful. Thank you. Uh, I'm, this is actually I'm, t I'm telling you I don't want to ask for the adjournment. But, uh, all right. Well, Mr. Winston made the motion, so I'm going to blame it on him. Is there anyone that wants to second his motion? The gentleman over there want to Which second one? his motion. Which one? <laughs> really? Okay. There you go. Can we? Uh, yes. Who is in favor of adjourning? Abs against? All right. Abstention. Motion carries. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful, safe evening and have an incredible break. I think it's terrific. I hope our students, our staff, all get to unwind and enjoy next week and happiest of holidays as well.